Great, wonderful. So welcome to lecture three of machine learning. So today what we will cover, we'll cover two, uh, two um, uh, key topics. The first one is how to know your data, get to know your data before using it. So we will look at data distributions, the notion of a data covariance and variance, and in the second part, we will see how knowing the data is important when it comes to, uh, for example, designing um, classifiers like discriminant functions to distinguish or discriminate between two classes. Okay? So, as usual, before we get started, what do you guys remember or recall from the previous lecture, from lecture two? What did we see? Linear regression, okay. Outliers. Outliers. More, guys? Supervised learning. Supervised learning. Yes, keep saying, keep, huh? Semi-supervised learning. Semi -supervised learning. Transductive learning. Okay, anything else? Unsupervised learning. So you guys clearly get now, I hope you're uh, clearly, clearly getting the difference between all of these uh, types of learners. Um, what else did we see? Anything else? Clustering, good. So clustering, is it supervised or unsupervised? unsupervised? Yes, unsupervised, okay. And we saw classification, right? And is classification supervised, unsupervised? Supervised, right? Okay, good. So I think these are the main things we've covered so far in the previous lecture. So let's get started. So today... We're going to look at the data. So how to get to know how to know your data. Uh, we need to basically look at the different samples and remember the data is composed of um, two things. First, a sample like your, your, your data point and the data point has many features. It's represented by a long feature vector. So what you need to care about or think about is first your points, how are they located in the space, but also the features that constitute each point. How are they related to one another? Okay, so we're going to look at this. So there are many uh, issues when it comes to, um, you know, doing learning, learning from, from data. And here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just cover a few of them, not all of them. So the first one is imbalanced data sets. Okay. So let's say, for example, you want to perform a classification. Okay. So you have... Uh, you have your your set of points, your first class, and might be uh, the dots, right? For example, something like this. Okay, each point represents features ex extracted from um, a dots picture, and then we have also our second class. So this is something like this. Okay. So what is the the problem with this kind of with this kind of setting right here. So you can see there is a dominant class, okay? So a dominant class, it means it has um, the samples when we train our model is going to learn more from the dominant class because we have more samples drawn from the first class, right? And we have what we call a minor class or minority class. And the minority class will not, might not influence that much the learning of the classifier. So this is case, in this case, we say that our training data is imbalanced, right? So we don't have a 50-50 uh, samples drawn from each class. So if you want to learn a classifier and draw a line 
um, a linear classifier to separate between these two classes, we might just put it somewhere right here, okay? But the problem, if we test on new samples, let's say these guys are our new testing samples, okay, so testing samples, and they might locate the actual distribution of the data if we were to learn from uh, more, how do I say, uh, from more samples, we had balanced classes, we will see that the real distribution is this, like it unfolds uh, in this way, okay? So in that case, the real learning, the, the, the good learning of the classifier, or a good classifier will be, will, will be around here, right? So you can see that this is a big problem when you have imbalanced data sets because you're learning from the dominant class and you cannot learn a lot from the, uh, the you cannot cover the, the wide spectrum or representativeness of the different points in the second minority class. So this is the first problem, imbalanced data sets, okay, when it comes to classes, class A and class B for classification, for example. Now, the second problem is what we call overlapping classes. So if you guys remember from the first lecture, we saw, like, we extracted manually, like, extracted uh, features. We designed uh, the nose size and the ear shape to nicely uh, classify or distinguish between the class, uh, the, the dog class and the cat class, okay? Here... In this space, what do you see? You see that these classes, the way they lie um, on this space is like they're very separable, right? So the p features we've picked up so far are very good candidates to put them in completely uh, two different parts of your space. So they're, they're easily separable, linearly separable, okay? Now imagine if somehow you don't pick up the right features, and here it's so simple because we have only two features. But imagine if your sample is represented in a, you know, high-dimensional space where each point is uh, has more than thousand features or more than a hundred features, right? How do you know which features best represent your sample? So the problem becomes more complex in high-dimensional space. So in this case, we might have the problem of what we call overlapping overlapping classes, like here, let's say um, this is our space, right? So these are these are our two features, oops, so, okay, so we have, for example, feature XI and fe feature XJ, so these two random features from your uh, original X that belongs to RD, this is your data point or sample. Okay, and then let's see our, our, the cats where they locate in this case. So if we do it this way, so we might have something like this, okay? If we pick, for example, the number of legs as a feature, as a first feature, and maybe the number of ears as the feature XJ, right? So both cats and dogs, they have four legs and two uh, ears, right? So in this case, you might end up having uh, a big overlap between the two classes. Okay, so this one right there. So this, in, in this case, it's very hard to separate or disentangle both distributions. So you need to uh, either select better features or maybe try, if you don't really have a lot of good features, you might also try to um, use a better or more sophisticated classifier, okay? So this is another problem. So first one is imbalanced data sets. Second one, overlapping classes, okay? And the third one, we've seen this before, what we call noise or borderline data. These are what we call the, the outlier samples. So in this case, if we are solving a uh, list chain, so we're doing supervised learning too, so we're doing uh, regression. So we have something like, like these are our data points we want to predict. So this is the input, 
x, this is the target to predict y, for example. And if we, we all we have is um, these training samples, then we might simply um, find our regression line fitting into uh, uh, the data distribution, uh, which means it's uh, so close to all of these points. Uh, uh, and here we might have what we call noisy samples, like outliers. They, li they lie far away from the distribution. And we saw this last time when it comes in the, in the uh, salary versus shopping example. So these points that, de that deviate or are far away from the mean of, uh, of the distribution, they're located far away, we call them outliers. Okay, so these might bias the model, these might, you know, uh, create a lot of problems when training your uh, supervised uh, learner. So we need to, you need to keep those in mind. So this is why it's important to plot your data, visualize your data. So especially if you have a few features, uh, you might, um, there are many methods to also visualize high dimensional uh, data by doing projections. So we will see that in future lectures. But uh, for now, you can. It's very important to just you know plot your data, see how it looks like. You know, from class one, class two. If you're doing regression, just see the distribution of your samples. Now there is a bigger problem, another type of problem, which is the uh, what we call the data shift or data fracture. So this is when the training and testing distributions are different. So here. For example, you can see in this example what we have. This is a, a simple classification example. So the source domain represents your training samples. So if you will learn or train a classifier in this space, you will draw a line around here, right? Now the problem, you see a completely shifted distribution in the testing space and the target space. So if you're if you were to train on just those samples, you might you you would want your classifier to be there, but it's not there, right? So the problem is you need to see not only you know if you're both classes, if you're doing classification, uh, you know look at the distribution of each class or the properties of each class independently, but you also need to keep in mind what is the distribution of the training data and what is the distribution of the testing data. So these are two different things, but they overlap in concepts. Okay, so, right. So here, let's look more closely what is the, the problem. So for example, I would like you to look at this curve, uh, this plot, uh, and we're, and think about if we were to use, like, uh, let's say here, all the blue dots represents the training samples. Okay, these are our training samples. And the yellow ones are the hidden test set. And in this example, we want to simply do a re build a regressor, okay, which means a line that goes through the distribution and tries, you know, to uh, be close to all the blue points. So the learned curve, if we were to learn a regressor F in this case, it might look something like this, okay? So it fits the blue ones kind of nicely, right? So the problem here, if you were to test to test this regressor on the, the yellow ones, you have a big issue, right? Because it doesn't fit that data. So the, the real target ideal function fx would look like this, something like this, for example, okay? So if we had access to the distribution of what we know, you know, when you're training your model, you're only allowed to see the distribution of your blue samples. You can't see the distribution of the yellow ones. And this is what we call a domain shift. We call it also a data fracture, which means that both domains, there are kind of, they are, there is a shift between them. Their the distribution is not similar. So this is a big problem in machine learning when it comes to data. So plotting and visualizing the data of your training samples and testing samples is important. Now let's look more at this problem here. So if we were to visualize or display the distribution of, or probability density here of the testing samples in yellow, you will see that uh, we have a big shift. So here, 
This is the mean of the distribution of the testing samples. And the other one, this one, is for the training samples. And you can see a big, basically a big shift right there. So this shift is what we call the data shift or the data mismatch. So what you're learning, you're learning, you're learning a model using this nice distribution, right? It's quite flat, it's normal distribution, Gaussian distribution, but then when you want to test your model, you're testing it on a completely different distribution of the data, right? So this is very problematic. So ideally, in an ideal world, you you wouldn't have a lot of you wouldn't have a shift, like a big shift. So how would the um, testing data distribution uh, look like? Maybe something like this, okay? Let's say maybe it's slightly shifted, but not too shifted, but very close to the original one. So in this case, it will be nice and ideal, right? But it, believe me, it's not always the case. So let's go back. I think I hit the right, right? So, but it's not always the case. Now, so let's just before look at how we derive those curves, right? Do you guys know how to do it? No. So we need to look, we're gonna, I'm gonna give you an example uh, on how to plot those, how to get the data distribution. So here, for example, let's say these are our training samples, testing samples, and in this two-dimensional space, I specifically picked two features, okay? So in the x-axis here, I am plotting the, um, what I'm, uh, right, in, in the x-i axis for this feature, let's call it feature one. It can be anything, right? You can always link back to the dogs and the cats example. And this is feature two, the second feature, right? And here, by just looking at the values of those features, I put my point right there. Okay, it's very simple. So this might be, I don't know, like two, and this is maybe, or maybe three, and this is one. And then I plot all my points in my space. Very simple. Now, what do we have? Remember, guys, we have our X data, and this is the matrix where we store all of our samples. So here in the, uh, the number of rows, the rows represent samples, and the columns represents what? Features, yes. So let's say, for example, for the, this is on my first point, S1, so sample one, and this is its long feature vector, okay? And then I have another sample, and here I stack all my, uh, all my testing samples, okay? Oh, sorry, all my training samples. So this is my uh, XTR data. Okay, that's a matrix, a sub-matrix of this matrix, right? And then we have what we have, we have also the testing samples. So this is maybe X, let's call it S T S1. And these are all my testing samples that I left out for testing. Okay. Now we need to look at which features in this case. We need to find the features XI and features X. J. Okay, so in this case, let's say these are, this is the uh, ith column, and this is the jth column, okay? And then what we do, we just take those um, values, right, and plot our points. Very simple, you got that, right? So first value, like here, for example, for S1, this um, should be 3, and this should be one, okay? So after that, we need to get the probability, the distribution of, let's say, of feature one in this case. So a single feature, so the ith feature. So what do we do? We take, for let's say we're looking at just the training samples. So we're taking, for example, the x train, so all those features right here, Oh, maybe I should use another color. Okay, so all those features, I will plot their distribution. So for it's like plotting a histogram. So I I look at the value of maybe um, how many features across all samples. So here, XTR has many many samples. Imagine if you have a thousand of samples, right? And you're looking at the values that your feature I 
xi takes. So the values will be in this, you know, uh, drawn on this axis. So for example, let's say xi takes um, uh, a value of 3, and then you have, I don't know, like something around like 4 here, 2, 1, 5, and we count the number, it's the frequency, right? We count the number of features across our samples, our training samples, that have a value of 3, okay? So let's say we might have maybe um, something around, I don't know, maybe uh, if we have thousand samples, it's a number here, so maybe just 50 features, 50 samples have that number of feature. And then we will have, for two, we count the number, the occurrence, how many, uh, uh, how, how many twos we have in this, in this vector, right? So the feature xi takes uh, twos and fours, okay? And maybe uh, the value of five and one, but here the frequency is less. So the majority, the majority of the feature, of the, the values, uh, the main value that the feature xi takes across all training samples is in this case three. Okay, then what we do, we just fit in a, uh, a normal distribution or a Gaussian curve to this one, and this will be the distribution of my data. So this is actually the, the blue line that, that I drew earlier, but it's maybe zoomed in a bit, right? And then we do the same for the testing sample. So we look at the testing samples and the distribution of the values, and here it might be something out of range, so it might be the feature takes completely different values in the test set, okay? So maybe the mean should be is around 6. So you can see the difference between the training and the testing. Now, I'll give you an example. So this is a, an example in MATLAB. So we'll look at uh, students' exam grades and how we go from the uh, histograms and we fit in a Gaussian curve to just get a distribution. So here, so do you guys see all of this? Right, do you see uh, at the back? Should I zoom or you see? Okay, cool. So I included, I'm going to upload this on Nova. So here what we have, uh, we load the data, so-called data distribution. I'm running this example, okay? So I'll explain. So here we have the data uh, exam grades. And uh, the sample contains 120 by 5 matrix of students' exam grades. So five exams, 120 is the number of students, okay? And each student has five marks, each for, you know, uh, a specific exam. So in this, what we're doing right here, we're retrieving uh, the feature, the second feature, which is like the second exam, okay, across all students. So, and then what we're, we're building our, uh, our um, data right there, it's X. Uh, so that's the long feature vector that I just visualized um, earlier, the blue one where we're like extracting just one feature. And then what we do, we just simply fit a, um, fit a normal distribution to uh, X, right? The histogram of um, the uh, exam grade, exam two grades across all students. And we visualize, it's very simple. So right here, what you guys can see, so the exam grades are, the mean is around maybe 74.8%. Uh, uh, and you can see the distribution of the data using this feature. Feature one is exam, the feature here is exam two, right? And the samples are the students. Let's say you want to do classification, for example. So you want to see uh, the distribution of the uh, the um, the feature exam across different uh, different different students, but not just one. You do, you want you do, you wouldn't want to judge a student by just one exam, but multiple exams. Okay, so we can also change the exam number. So maybe take one here, and you can see if we plot the distribution, you can see a change in the distribution, and this is clearer right here. So you can see. The change right there okay and yeah so this is you know very simple you can do this to any data set even the data I have given you so you can pick two random features and plot their distributions and see whether they uh, overlap between testing and training samples and also you can look 
at the distribution across classes, not just training and testing sets if you're using five-fold or ten-fold cross-validation. Okay? So, do you have any questions that clear up to here? Yes? It's clear, but 